السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال الله تبارك وتعالى في سورة الحج أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عاقبة الأمور صدق الله العلي العظيم God speaks about the characteristics of an Islamic community, an Islamic society. He says, those whom we enable and establish in the land, in مكنهم في الأرض, once we establish them in the land, we provide them with authority, with political power, with sovereignty, They do four things. They have four goals, four main goals of an Islamic community, an Islamic society, an Islamic country. These four goals, one of them focuses on the relationship with God. The other three focus on the relationship with people around them, with your community members, with all people. The first one which is a relationship with God and connection with God, aqamu salat they perform, they establish the prayers. And salat here is generic. It's not only what we do, these physical activities. Salat here, in the broader term, in the general term, salat means connection with God. Centering faith in our life. Life has to be your, the center of your faith, your main goal. Faith, relationship with God. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, thkuru Allah dhikran kathira. The remembrance of God, the connection with God, the relationship with God, the dedication to God. When you speak with God every single day, these are the five daily prayers are formal ways of speaking. But there is something which is equally or more effective when you have your own private time by yourself and you chat with God. You chat intimately with God. You speak your own language. You don't have to be formal. You don't have to be Shakespearean when you speak with God. Use your own native, simple language that goes from your heart, from your inner conscience. Speak with God. We need God in this life. We need to put God first. Our relationship with God is a primary. All other relationships with others, including our family members, is secondary. Aqamu salat Aqamu salat We need God. We need God in the beginning of our life, in the middle of our life, at the end of our life. When we are rich, we need Him. When we are poor, we need Him. When we are very healthy, we need Him. We are... When we are suffering, we need Him. When we are among family and friends, we need Him. And we are, when we are alone, we need Him. We need God in our life. This is my simple advice. 
And I'm saying that out of experience. I don't read this in a book. I experienced that in my life. No one could help me and support me and empower me and inspire me in this universe more than God himself. God is the source of every goodness. So this is number one. The pillar, the four important pillars of a Muslim community. One is relationship with God. Aqamu salat then we come to the other pillars, other foundations of a good, progressive, healthy, cohesive, harmonious, united Islamic community, Islamic society. The other three, وَآتَوُ الزَّكَاةِ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ They give alms, they enjoin good, and they for, forbid evil and wrong. These three are also important. Wa'ata with zakat is a relationship, connection between you and people of your community. When you share, based on sharing, sharing your zakat, it could be wealth, financial wealth, it could be intellectual wealth and expertise, it could be affection and love and care that you have. Sharing every gift that God has given you with your community members with your neighbors, wa'ata was zakat, they give alms. And in so many hadiths and verses in the Quran, they link both salat and zakat together. They are inseparable, indivisible from each other. If you take one away, the other one is going to collapse. Thus, whenever Quran mentions the salat, immediately is joined with zakat. الَّذِينَ أَقَامُوا يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ They work together. They work together. You cannot separate them. The hadith says if you give alms, but you don't pray as if you have not given alms. If you pray, but you don't give alms as if you have not prayed, it becomes a futile, pointless. They work together. It's like maintaining good health. Ask anyone how to maintain a good health. They tell you, number one, physical exercise. Number two, number two is what? Diet. Diet. Healthy food. You cannot just exercise without having good food or healthy food. It does not work. I know someone who does exercise. He doesn't miss his exercise, but he smokes. I tell him it doesn't work. If you want to have good health, you have to quit smoking. Exercise alone is not going to help you. Exercise and healthy diet. Same thing. Same thing in Islam. Salat and zakat, both. Prayers, connection with God and connection with people too. You cannot live lonely, alone, segregate yourself, alienate yourself in this life from people. God wants me and you to live among people, to help each other, to reach out to each other. This is the purpose of religion. The purpose of religion is not just to live by yourself, go into a cave, into a mountain, and live your life as many people used to do in the past. This is called Rahbaniya. God says, no, 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 we don't want you to go to segregate. We want you to be in the middle of the society, in the middle of the street. Reach out to others. You are a human being. Share what you have with others. Wa'ata was zakat. And then the other two foundations, وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ They enjoined the right and they forbid the evil. To create a harmonious, healthy, strong society, we have to stand with each other. Standing with each other means sharing our good experiences with others, telling them what is good and what... This is not intrusion. In some cultures, they understand this as being intrusion. You are intruding into my person. No, I'm not. I'm reminding you. We have to remind. They remind each other. They, they remind each other about the truth. And patience. We need to empower. This is empowering. Do not look at it from a negative lens. That he's intruding in my private life. No, it's not intrusion. This is empowerment. 
We need to be reminded. We are human beings. We need to remind each other. Al-Amr bil Ma'ruf. Ma'ruf, many of the exegist commentators of the Quran, they say, whatever is good and right, munkar, whatever is evil. But there are other exegists, they have a better explanation of ma'roof and munkar. They say ma'roof is anything that goes in harmony and in accordance with the human nature, human instinct, human innate, human moral capacity. This is ma'roof. Anything that goes in accordance with you as a human being, that is ma'roof. Wide range of, of things, of sayings, of deeds. Anything that builds the society, empowers the society, is ma'roof. And the opposite of that is munkar. Munkar, anything that goes against the human nature, the human fitra, fitrat Allah allati fatara nasa alayha. The human moral compass, anything that goes against it, it's called in Islam, in the Quranic vocabulary and language, is called evil and wrong and munkar. And these things, the good and the bad, they've been installed in us since the day we were created, since the first man on earth, and they don't change. Nothing that is good from first day can be bad later on. And nothing that was evil and bad in the beginning, a day will come that it becomes good. Nothing. Good and bad, they have a perpetual journey in this life. No society, no president, no political party, no Republican, no Democrat, no rich, no poor, no white, no black can change them. These are, these these are values, values, principles, that a package. We were born with these. They are inherent in our character. So circumstances are not going to change them. Nothing that was good one day is going to turn into bad. Good is good forever and bad is bad forever. Politics cannot change these values. They cannot change these values. They cannot go against the will of God, the creation of God, the human nature, they can't. They fail. At the end, they're going to fail. In an Islamic society, we have to encourage, we have to empower, we have to inspire, we have to promote good values. We have a duty. If someone tells you this is intrusion, he's not right. Because we live collectively on this land, in this community, in this country, in this neighborhood. We impact each other. We influence each other. Therefore, we have to live like one family. We cannot be divided. And anything that divides the community, anything that is repugnant morally, ethically, repugnant, we should discourage. It's a responsibility. But of course, it has ways. It has ways. It's not a state of anarchy. In some countries, they understand ma'roof, to enforce ma'roof by, by force, by violence. No, it's not about violence. It's not about force. It's about logic. Religion is based on logic. God says in chapter 55, Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'ana khalaq al-insana allamahu al-bayan inspired him or her with, with logic, not with force. God does not want you to, to use force against anyone, anyone. We are not graduates of, of, of West Point Academy. We are not in the military. Life is different than men. Sometimes military, we have to use, they have to use force in some instances when logic does not work. But most of the time, God says, use your logic. <laughs> we have been endowed with bayan, with this beautiful faculty, bayan, intelligent expression, human expression. Use this for amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. When you forbid something evil, Use your logic, use your conscience, use your love, your affection, your respect. Use these methods. 
so you can succeed. And last but not least, one of the manifestations of this community, which has been described in chapter 22, Surah Al-Hajj, الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ one of the manifestations according to the school of Ahl al-Bayt, according to the five, fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, alayhi salatu was salam, is, is the dawla, the state of Imam al-Mahdi, alayhi salatu was salam. It's the government of Imam al-Mahdi that has been acknowledged in Sunni and Shia sources. In the Sunni sources, Sahih al-Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi, Nasa'i, Abu Dawood, all of them, they emphasize the return of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salatu was salam. The description in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet turns to his companions and he says to them, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ فِيكُمْ الْمَهْدِي إِذَا نَزَلَ فِيكُمْ الْمَهْدِي وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ فِيكُمُ الْمَسِيحِ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How do you feel when Jesus is going to come back, the second coming of Jesus, which is in the Quran and the Sunnah, and then the leader, the Imam of that time, is one of you, which is a reference to Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. So Jesus is going to be his lieutenant. Jesus, the universal prophet and messenger, is going to be the lieutenant, the aide, the senior aide of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salatu was salam. Because his community is not based on political games or corruption or injustice or abuse or radicalism or fanaticism. This is a pure Islamic state, not an Islamic state that is based on sword, on a bloodshed, on terrorizing the innocent people. This is not an Islamic state. Islamic state is based on nothing but love and forgiveness and tolerance and affection valuing human beings regardless of their of their religious background moral background color whatever they are all respected this is the state of al imam al mahdi alayhi salatu was salam bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته عليا أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والإمام الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها When we speak about the amana and the trusts Usually our minds go to the material, financial trust The money, the loan that you take, you have to return it the car, the house that you rent, material things. But there are other types of amanat and a trust, and these are the moral, moral amana, moral trust, moral responsibilities. These are more important than the material ones. Moral responsibilities means your family. It's a moral, your, your moral responsibility to take care of your family, to, the, to be the best father, the best caretaker, 
the best guardian, the best role model, the best affectionate mother, the best son, the best daughter. It's a, it's a moral responsibility, amana. Your parents are amana. You have to take care of them. The knowledge that you have, God, if God has given you knowledge and professionalism, you have to render it to its rightful people and to add amanati ila ahliha. Return it. God has given you a gift. How are you using? How do you use this gift? Are you spoiling it, destroying it, neglecting it, or making the best out of it? The profession that you have. The life, your life. Your life is important. Your life should not be wasted. No minute, no hour of our life should be wasted. We are running in a marathon in this life. This life is nothing but a marathon. And we are nearing the end. The final line. And after that we leave. And this life is not going to wait for us. We have to run. In a marathon, every fraction of a second counts. A fraction of a second counts. And we're going to be asked about every day we spent in this life. When we are resurrected. And one of the most important aspects of these amanat and these trusts is your work, your job, your profession. Muslims focus only on learning salat and siyam, but they do not focus on learning how to be professional in your life, in your work. They don't teach their kids. It's a culture, unfortunately, a culture. For them, salat, five daily prayers is important. But if, if when it comes to his job, his role, his work, his profession, his office, his customers, nothing is important. The other day I was in a doctor's office and he doesn't wait for you to speak to ask him a question. Why? Because he has another second and third and fourth patients are waiting in other rooms. He gives you only five minutes. Again, I, I was in a hospital. The, the, the surgeon who's supposed to uh, uh, conduct a surgery he was busy playing with his phone answering his text messages this is not professionalism I went to one of the states they have appointed an imam imam of the mosque after six months they fired him so I said why did you fire him they say say it he comes to Friday prayers half an hour late all the people are waiting. The imam comes with puffy eyes. He has just woken up in the morning. At noon, he wakes up at noon, mashallah. He worships God the whole night. Maybe, I don't know what he does. What else do you do in America? He comes late. The Friday prayers, he comes half an hour late. This is an imam who's supposed to be a role model, who's supposed to be on time, who's supposed to read the Quran when the Quran says, Inna salata kanat alal mu'minina kitaban mawquta. The prayers has to be conducted on time. Do not delay it two hours, three hours, five hours. On time. A teacher who goes to his classroom late, many of the teachers in many Muslim communities, they go late. And when he leaves, he leaves before the end of the time, half an hour, because his mother is in the hospital, his wife is cooking, he, she needs help today with the cooking the food or what. His son, he has to pick up his son from kindergarten with all these excuses. I remember when I went to study English, this is more than 30 years ago, at Harrow College in London. Our teacher, our English white teacher, I still respect her until today. And I wish I can find her somewhere on Facebook, but I forgot her name, unfortunately. This teacher, she used to teach us for two hours but then another 30 or 40 minutes over time. And the class ends at 9 p.m. And the janitorials, they come, they knock at the door, they open the door. They want to do their job to clean the classrooms, prepare them for the next following day. And the teacher is still teaching. One day I asked her, do they give you extra money for overtime? She said, no, nothing. I love my job. I love to teach. I love to convey the idea to you guys before you leave. This is ethical person. This is moral person. I respect her. I don't care what religion she has. I care about her conduct. We have to build the new generation to be Muslims, not just by name and identity. I'm Muslim. You have to be Muslim by conduct, by 
by, by, by your work. Show me your work. We need to teach in every mosque, in every Islamic circle, in every s Islamic family, in every Islamic community. We need to teach. Beside the prayers, we need to teach work ethics. Work ethics. To respect the time. If you are hired from 9 to 5, this time is not yours. This time belongs to the office, to the corporation, to the company. You have to work. You have to produce. Not that you sit and you read newspapers. Or you surf the internet. Or you play games. Or you speak with your wife on the phone. This is illegal. This is immoral. Unacceptable. This is why some countries are backward. And they're going to remain backward until, until I don't know when. And some countries are, are moving forward. They don't pray five times a day. They don't have a prayers, but they have work ethics. Prayers alone does not help. Prayers with work ethics. This is the purpose why we pray. To learn work ethics. To learn honesty. To learn integrity. To learn professionalism in our work. In whatever capacity you are. Whether you are a physician, a lawyer, a teacher, an imam, an Uber driver, a supermarket owner, whatever, you have to be professional in your work. Respect the time. Respect people's time. Don't waste people's time. Respect them. They hired you for a specific mission. God says about Ibrahim, why he says about him, he was ummah, he was like a nation. He's an individual. He's not a multimillionaire. He's a simple individual. But God says, Kana Ibrahim ummah. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. He's like a nation in his power, in his production, in his hard working. He's equal to an ummah. Why? Because he says, Wa Ibrahim alladhi waffa. He fulfills the mission. He accomplishes the mission. He finishes his work. He does not leave his work halfway through when he leaves. Wa Ibrahim alladhi waffa. We have to do waffa to fulfill our mission. We have to, otherwise Islam by slogan is not Islam. It's not Islam. Islam by conduct, by ethics, by your work. So your customers are happy with you. Before Yelp becomes happy with you, God should be happy with you when you do a work. We need to teach professionalism to the young generation. This is how Islam succeeds. This is... This is how people start loving this religion. When, look, when they look at the Muslims and they find them to be professional on time. They don't waste people's time. They come on time. They leave on time. They are available there. It makes a huge difference in our life, my friends. Inshallah, Tuesday is a day of election. Needless to say, how important for us. I spoke about this subject many times. It's important for us to cast your vote. It's important for us. If you have not already done this through mail, you must go. This is your moral response. And don't tell me it's not going to have any changes. It will. It will. When you persist, in Allah sabirin And the second thing, I, asked, I, I spoke about the project of a full-time Shia Islamic school here in Irvine last week. And many people are happy and excited about it. And I'd like to remind you that we are working on this diligently with some professionals, with some honest people in our community. We need your prayers now, but your money tomorrow. Not just, uh, I'm telling you. Not only dua, dua from God and money from your pockets. These two things, inshallah, are going to fulfill this dream, which is very much needed. And inshallah, next Friday, we're going to see you at what time here? 12 inshallah alhamdulillah and uh, we have to fix this roof Haj Samir mentioned the previous weeks some of you many of you are so generous we collected $25,000 but the least estimate we received is $40,000 so we are short on $15,000 we need your help your contribution inshallah we collect this money because the rain alhamdulillah after so many years we have good news, the rain is coming on Monday, inshallah, Monday and Tuesday. By the way, when it rains, go and stand under the sky and thank God for the rain. Don't say, oh, rain, terrible. No, 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 don't say. If you say terrible, you are not going to see the rain until 20 years from now. 
give thanks to Allah. Rain is the symbol of God's love and care and mercy. So welcome the rain. We need the rain in this area. And last but not least, we have special guest today, Dr. Ruqayya Khan from Claremont Graduate School, Professor of Islamic Studies, or maybe Religious Studies, and her two students, Sister Hajja Muna and Brianna, who came to attend the Friday prayers today. We welcome them, and we welcome all of you. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi'a allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat وعجل في فرج سيدنا وإمامنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد